Hello and welcome back and that is right it's time for another should you buy this is the locker store gen 4 but this video is going to be about the whole locker store series I'm going to help you decide whether the locker store 4, 6, 8 or even 10 is best for you and your data and I'm going to do it by giving you 5 good reasons why this system is a bloody great NAS but I'm also going to give you 5 reasons why you may want to give it a miss so without wasting any further time let's crack on with number 1 Two words, bandwidth, baby. All of the Lockstore Gen 3 series are absolutely riddled in connections for you to make the most of you and your data. Now, to put that into a little perspective, most four base systems arrive with these days one gig, 2.5 gig, maybe a 10 gig if you pay enough money. This system arrives with two. 10 gig Ethernet ports, both copper, both giving you up to one gigabyte of data transmission per second. But you've also got two 5 gigabit network connections there that will give you to half a gig each, or around 5 to 550, a little bit more megabytes per second. So already this system rocks out with a combined potential 3 gigabytes per second external network bandwidth there. But it doesn't stop there. Because all of the systems also arrive in this family with USB 4 IP connectivity. USB 4, aka Thunderbolt 4, allows you to directly attach your Mac or Windows system with a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 cable or USB 4 cable directly point to point and open up 20 gigabits per second or 2 gigabytes per second on each of those connections. That is an enormous amount of network connectivity and also allows you to have this system central while multiple users are all connecting to it or enjoying that lovely bandwidth. Low impact, low noise. This system, and again, I've tested this on the 4-bay in a massive review linked in the description, but also this applies largely to the 6, 8, and 10-bay. This system is surprisingly low impact. Notwithstanding its scale, given how much is crammed inside, and the very least for the 4-bay, it's worth highlighting that one, power consumption with this system, both in idle and utilization between 30 and 50%, was pretty darn impressive. I had the system doing all kinds of stuff on the hard drives and SSDs, and throughout that process, not only was power consumption fairly modest for the scale, as I'm sure you can see on screen, but on top of that, when it came to the noise generated by the system with 440 b Seagate iWolf drives, the noise was not too shabby either. Now, it's worth highlighting if you use larger drives, you know, anything larger than 8 or 10 TB with a plat account goes higher and the read and write actions of the actuator inside that drive gets heavier, it's going to amplify the noise a lot more because of the metal chassis. But I will say that overall, the um, noise generated by this system and the power consumption was pretty darn impressive. And that's not even factoring in heat generation. When I was hammering the drives inside, the heat generation of the individual SSDs didn't go higher than 49 to 50 degrees at the highest right point there. And because the rear of the system also factors in a copper finned heat pipe design coming off that CPU, temperatures inside the system, even though it's very, you know, squeezed in together in that chassis, was, again, impressive. Storage. This system not only arrives with four individual hard drive bays, which, by the way, have got wide compatibility with all of the drives in the market, going all the way up to 24TB, but, again, 6 bay, 8 bay, 10 bay, all of their respective bays, but all of the systems arrive with four M.2 NVMe slots built into the top, where you can install sneaky little super fast SSDs inside these systems. Now, those four M.2 NVMe's, they can be used for caching, they can be used for RAID storage pools, and therefore volume management and scratch disk and hot cold data and such but also they allow uh, on gen 4 architecture a lovely two gigabytes per second per lane on there so each one of them at gen 4 times one and times one is a bit annoying but for temperature generation and lane distribution it sort of makes sense each one when i was tapping with ssh could reach 1.3 gigabytes per second up and down now when i rated them all together i got numbers between 2.5 and all the way up to three gigabytes per second 
in terms of RAID performance there in Crystal Disk across those drives. Again, that's just another way in which you're going to be able to take advantage of that tremendous external throughput. And also keep in mind that M.2 NVMEs these days go all the way up to 8 terabytes. This is the Adlink A95. This is a Gen 4 8TB drive. That means you could put four of those inside there and absolutely rule the roost in terms of SSD storage and still have room on the 4, 6, 8 and 10 bay to massively populate it with larger archival hard drives. Now this is a turnkey NAS solution. It arrives not only with the hardware but the software. ADM, Acer Store Disk Manager, and I'll say ADM software has evolved a great deal. The latest version, ADM 5, which this system arrives with, has continued along the path that the previous generations of that software have set. What they've done is effectively looked at what people are looking for in the NAS industry and slowly integrate a lot of it. The result is there are certain features that are available only on Synology or only on QNAP, if you're trying to choose between those two, that both of which are available on this support of write once read many on both an ext4 and btrfs system support of nvme ssd pools with third party drives not just locking it in with first being able to create local sync folders with a synchronization tool in easy sync that allows you to use your windows or mac system comfortably and then in the background the system synchronizing you have that option there scheduled on and off um support of eu uh, EUP power services there support of multimedia applications coming out of the wazoo support of AI functionality using third party tools not first we'll talk about that later taking advantage of virtual machine deployment container deployment there and backup and synchronization tools for NAS to NAS, NAS to cloud, NAS to USB, NAS to NAS, and archival tools that you can use for slot in, slot out. This, the software itself is responsive. The software itself ultimately arriving with this is just a big part of that price tag. And you're still getting all of the hardware as well. And keep in mind, there are mobile apps, there are desktop apps as well. But returning to the hardware, we want to talk about the CPU and memory combination inside all of the Locker Store series. Number one, they all arrive with the V3C14 embedded AMD Ryzen processor, a four core, eight thread CPU there. It has got a lovely little clock speed that goes all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. And that CPU has got 20 lanes of Gen 4 architecture to play with there. But it only has a 10 to 25 watt reported TDP, which means in terms of power consumption versus power utility, it's actually a lovely little balance being found there. Now, that is combined alongside not only that CPU being lovely and powerful and file proficient, but support of ECC. Error correcting code or error code correction. ECC memory allows data when it is being passed through to be compared at the beginning of the write to the end of the write to make sure the data is correct. And therefore, you're not going to encounter inconsistent data down the line or corrupt data years from now that you're trying to get from an archive. ECC memory support on desktop NAS is really thin. Only Synology really provide that with the majority of other brands either supporting ECC CPUs, uh, EC supported CPUs at the rack mount level, or when they provide it, not even including ECC memory. This system arrives with 16 gig of DDR5 ECC memory. So you've got your ECC and your on die ECC all built into it there. But it can't all be sweetness and cream. It can't all be good things. There are five things about this device that may put you off buying it. So let's crack on with number one. Ooh, come on, come on. That's just the way it is. That price tag. Now, let's be honest, we've got to be relative. We don't expect anything for free. But because Acer Store are releasing this, the Gen 3 series, off the back of the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, it gives you something of a bit of whiplash when you're looking at the price tag of a family where the four base system was around $500 to $599, and then suddenly this four bay rocks out at $1,299. Now, the scale up in hardware is astronomical by comparison in terms of internal and external hardware there which obviously has a price tag but there's no avoiding that for those of you that were looking at gen 2 and went no i'll wait for the gen 3 that price spike is going to be killer for some of you uh with the four bay at 12.99 and the six bay at 14.99 the eight and the 10 bay are yet to launch in the market from what i could see but when they do they'll almost certainly hit 16.99 and 18.99 respectively there now again those are end of the world prices 
when you're looking at the hardware in isolation. But the problem is, a lot of you are going to look at the Acer Store brand, which is one of the smaller brands in the world of NAS, and then look at that price tag, and it is going to make you start making comparisons to competitors out there. For all of the nice things I said about ADM version 5, it has to be said that the software does still feel a little clunky. They've removed a lot of the bloatwary stuff that ADM3 had in the previous generations and refining the App Center a little bit more. But it has to be said that uh, the way they are locked in and the way some of the navigation goes to some of the system services still feels, for those out of the know, a little clunky. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you are utilizing, for example, the backup appliances. Now, you would assume, from an, an outsider's point of view, that what you're looking for is the backup tool. But there are multiple backup and synchronization tools uh, for different services on this system built into different app portals. They need to merge those into one. Other brands have done it. The idea of there being one portal to take care of your backup and your sync operations just makes sense. And having it spread out will often lead to one of two things. One, a user can't find the application or service, or two, they don't know it exists. The same thing goes to the security management. This system has two-factor authentication. It has right one to read many. It has uh, port checks, port blocking, and um, a lot of block lists and IP block lists and more, and it's an ADM uh, security service as well. But again, they're all separated all over the place rather than in a central window and a central portal. Then goes to the multimedia tools. I get you want a music tool, you want a video tool, you want a photo tool. But again, all of the media in indexing services and scraping tools and all of the tools are spread out out rather than centralized in an Acer Store Media, Acer Store VM, Acer Store Backup, Acer Store Security Portal. These are small things that you can get over once you understand the UX, but for a new user, it's going to be frustrating. Remember earlier when I said that users are going to get a bit of whiplash when it comes to the pricing from the Gen 1, Gen 2, and then the Gen 3 series of these devices? The same goes for that CPU. For all of the nice things I said, there are definitely a body of users out there that are disappointed that this newer generation system does not have uh, an Intel integrated graphics processor or even an AMD uh, embedded graphics processor there. Now, what I mean, it means that there are users out there that are running highly graphical processes. The, probably the most common of which being Plex Media Server in terms of transcoding and reshaping of files, but there's still no avoiding that as good as that CPU is, there are going to be users that are going to buy this, perhaps for something like Plex or Multimedia Streaming to remote clients to where conversions are going to be necessary, not just for licensing reasons, but for those users, they're going to hit something of a wall when it comes to that CPU being less efficient about power consumption due to its lack of integrated graphics there. And again, there's just going to be a lot of users that are going to base a lot of their knowledge on the existing Locker Store series, which had integrated graphics based on Intel Celeron architecture, which is not present here. So it's good to be aware of that early doors. It may seem mean to single out one particular application on the ADM lineup for you know some criticism, but I have to say that the surveillance application, Surveillance Center, is still underwhelming right now. In ADM 5, it's still running the existing version of Surveillance Center, and it just pales into comparison the likes of what you see from QNAP QVR and Synology Surveillance Station. It does the job, it supports a bunch of IP cameras, supports real-time streaming protocol and OnViv, and you've got things like KVM output where you can attach a monitor and have a standalone appliance there. But it just feels incredibly dated there, and the fact that ADM 5 is rolling out with that is going to disappoint some of you. The reason I single out that application more than any other is for two reasons. Number one, it's because a lot of users now are using NAS systems as NVRs because of the huge amount of storage potential and the support of those third-party cameras. But the other reason I single it out is there is a better version. There is a beta version of Surveillance Center that you can access on this system, but it doesn't roll out with, and I'm not prepared to give this system credit on a beta, I will highlight the beta has enhanced and increased TLC uh, security support there. It has a better browser support as well. One of the issues they've encountered is, is their surveillance application running on multiple browsers, and now it runs a great deal better. Uh, the user interface apparently is a great deal more responsive, but I can't give this system and this family credit based on a beta application. ADM5 that this is rolling out with is non-beta, 
that the surveillance station application is. So I can't really give it credit for that. The surveillance station application, if you are buying this system and one of your multifaceted reasons for adding value to this purchase is the fact that you are going to get a surveillance system included with it. Just keep in mind that you're not getting the best surveillance app in the market right now. This last point may feel slightly disingenuous, but I know there are going to be business users considering the Locker Store series that would have liked to have known this, perhaps in certain situations, before they bought it. And that is the global office of um, Acer Store. They don't cover as many regions as their competitors. Now, they are a smaller company, and that is to be expected. But even though Acer Store, and I've been to Taiwan at Computech several times, they have a multilingual team. They have teams that speak multiple languages, that speak or represent different regions, and they do have key players in individual regions supporting their customers and supporting resellers and stuff. But it has to be said, they do not have the global availability and reach in terms of that support and relationship with their end users as some of their competitors. Now, most home users are probably not going to know about that because they're going to go via the online portal and that's fine. But if you're a larger business user that is weighing up quite an expensive purchase, and that's even when you move to the rack mount devices, which I hope feature this hardware architecture, that those businesses are going to want a lot more of a relationship with the business than their smaller global office reach can provide. It's a very small detail and only affects a small subset of users, but it is definitely something I think a lot of large-scale business users that are weighing up devices that arrive in the four figures will probably want to know. But there you go. That has been the before you buy and should you buy on the Lockstore Gen 3 series. What do you guys think? Again, as mentioned, there is a longer review already made on the channel. Link below in the description to check that out along with a full written review. If you found this video helpful and if you're going to go ahead and buy this device, please use the links in the description to the retailers below in order to get one for you. It results in a small commission coming here to NAS Compares and it allows me and Eddie, just us at NAS Compares, to keep doing what we do. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.